Pretty miserable, wet, windy day. Qantas is on box rest because you'll hurt your leg. Well, his, we hope he has an abscess in the foot. Um, he's much, much better. You're doing good, aren't you? So I thought, because I've had a couple requests, this would be an ideal day to show you all of the equipment and different kit I use in training and competition. Let's go to the tack room queue. So welcome to my corner of the yard tack room. Um, I thought I'd start with my bridles, so just take one down. Um, I've got a mixture of Zilco and Pioneer Endurance. I'm it's mostly Pioneer um, Endurance now, and a mixture of the kind of the more shiny type, and also then we've got Qantas's, which is a much more matte. Um, I really, really like them. I love that I can ring Zoe, the lady at Pioneer Endurance, and be like, "This is send her pictures of my horse. Be like, what colours do you think would suit him? I mean, I always go navy and white, but in different, like, combinations. Um, and if there's any difficulties, like they're sensitive around the ears or anything like that, then she modifies the tack to fit it. And if you ever need repairs, you can send it back. And I just really love that, one, it's a British company, two, customer service is amazing, and three, that I can literally put all of my tack, well, this stuff, um, in the washing machine to clean it. And after every ride, I can just dunk it in a bucket or hose it down, and it is nice and clean for next time. Next up are the types of bits I use. So I always use a Mylar bit, um, and this is just because I really like, so we spend a lot of hours um, with the tack on and in the saddle, so I want something that's super comfortable. And the Mylar bits, they have a like a low port, so it gives a little bit of tongue relief, and then it's got this roller in the middle, so each side, whether you kind of, you're putting pressure on the rein one side, it's only gonna move that one side, rather than if I kind of, pull this side then the whole bit is going to move or if I pull both reins it's not going to like scissor and clamp the tongue so it can't go any more than that. I've got lots of different types of Mylar, they come in like Pelham, Snaffle, uh, Drop Snaffle, um, Kimblewick, like the Western style, so there's loads and loads of different types, types by I always go for Mylar and I have done I think ever since I was probably about 11 or 12 because I had a talk by them at Young Rider Camp. They've also got this little copper inlay which makes it kind of like more chewy, tastes nicer for the horses. I've also got for Qantas, let's put that down, for Qantas I've got the Mylar combination. So it always looks a little bit kind of mental and maybe a little bit harsh but actually the Mylar combinations are actually one of the kind of softer bits that I have but it distributes the pressure over the nose under the curb chain and over the pole before you even get any pressure in the mouth so as you pull you've got all of that room before the bit even kicks in so it's it's mainly nose curb and pole pressure and I find with Qantas that works so much better I get much more response and I don't feel like I'm hanging off his mouth all the time so I really really like that um, they come in like short shank long shank and lots of different nose and curb options so next up we have my saddles all of my saddles are panel saddles um, and I will show you I've got two different types so the first one is a reactor panel saddle um, but first of all let's go through the gas so I use the Steuben, Steuben, Steuben? That sounds like I'm saying it wrong. If I'm saying it wrong, I'm sorry. Um, the neoprene girth with elastic both ends and with the little D-ring. I don't like putting my um, breastplate kind of threaded through the girth because I think that's just a point of pressure that you don't need. So I really like to have the girth with the D-ring um, and the elastic sides. I just kind of like the fact that I know that research has come out that elastic girths are a little bit more unstable than non-elastic but I just feel like my horses are tacked up for so long it makes me feel like they can have a little bit more play in the girth system I don't know if that's true it's just how I feel about it um, but I also 
have gas sleeves um, because my ponies are very sensitive. And this, oh my gosh, this is the fluffiest gas sleeve I think ever. Um, so this is an Engel Nat Naturfell. Um, it's a sheepskin girth sleeve. Now I got given this by um, Glaze and Gordon. They were really, really lovely to send me this to try. And oh my gosh, it's just so fluffy and it's it's so good and it's it's wearing quite well. Like you wouldn't even be able to tell. Um, and what I do is I like get a um, knife or a bit of scissors and along the seam just cut a tiny little hole so this D-ring can come through. So here are my reactor panel saddles. I have only had them for a year, 18 months now. Um, you'll see in a second the saddles that I've used previously but they're now out of production. I really, really enjoy them. I like that they're kind of traditional looking. Um, the company that make them, the saddle exchange guys, the reactor panel um, people are really good at coming out and fitting. Um, and doing any modifications you want and they'll even make you custom saddles and there are so many different kind of types from literally dressage to showing to um, like Spanish riding school ones, proper like lightweight endurance ones that don't have panels. This is just the GP, um, I kind of like the cut. I'm thinking about maybe getting a custom one made because I think I might need the stirrup leathers to be just a tiny bit further back to be super comfy for a 160. But for now, it's really good. Let me just show you the panels. So I've got a split numner underneath. And then the panels, I don't know if you'll be able to see, the panels are kind of like block velcroed on. Next up, we have my stirrup leathers and stirrups. So I've only ridden really in, in two types. I've tried a few others, um, but not really got on with them so I've I've not competed in them but these are the two that I've done competitions in so these are the podium cage stirrups some of the comfiest stirrups I've ever had I've done many many miles in them and then my preferred ones at the moment I've got very lucky to have two sets of these because Dan bought me some for my birthday as a spare not a spare to go on my third saddle um, is the free jumps soft up pro it's like riding on clouds, like there's so much security, my ankle feels really good, I love the safety feature that you can't get caught in it. Um, my foot never budges because of these little studs and I always thought when I looked at these studs that my um, boots might get ruined on the bottom but they don't seem to cause any undue wear. And then my stirrup leathers are these um, webbing core with like a, I think it's a fake leather, it might be a real leather, I'm not sure. Um, but one is Wintech and one is Bates, and they're the kind of dressage T-bar slimline, because I don't like having like lots of bulk underneath my leg, especially when I'm in the saddle for a long, long time. So my other saddle is a free and easy saddle, which is also a panel saddle. The reason I love panel saddles so much is that they're so adaptable and you can really change how they fit as your horse gets fitter without having to buy a new saddle every time. Um, and also they distribute the pressure really, really well. Um, so for this one, it comes with a kind of fancy girth. It's the V-girth system. Um, so it's split into two, so you can put the, the kind of the girth leathers, billet, I'm not sure. The bits that you put the girth onto move up and down the saddle, so it's really, really adjustable. So it can be at the front and the back or in the middle, and it doesn't really matter. However, nobody makes a girth sleeve for these. So my mum got loads of um, tubular girth sleeves from Griffin New Med. Love the Griffin New Med stuff. And then chopped them down the middle and added some elastic so that Tizzy had lots of girth sleeves. So I've got about eight of these because obviously you need one for every loop. Moving on to numbers, I only really use I guess four brands for actual competition. I've tried quite a few in my time. So this is one of the split numbers. So it the panel goes in here and it velcros on. This is ba made by Griffin Numed. I love using them because it's a British brand. They also make lots of nice custom stuff as well and I never have any problems with rubbing or anything. I can also use kind of normal numbers with my split 
kind of panel systems. And the other things I use is the Pioneer wool numbness, so they're more of an endurance saddle shape. So kind of the navy and white one that you've seen me use before. So I've got that one on here. Really lovely quality will last ages. And then I also like using the Toclat Callback ones, which is also in an endurance cut, and it's a really thick um, pile. It's a man-made wall type thing, but um, just for Tizzy, as she's getting a little bit older, it adds a little bit more padding, and I've just got two that I switch her between a white one and a black one. Oh, and then my fourth type of numna is exactly the same, it's a split numna, it came with this saddle second hand and that is from Mates and it has got the nicest, fluffiest half wool here. So um, Mates and Griffin You Made are kind of the ones that make most of the split numna ones and then Pioneer Endurance make a really nice endurance numna that isn't for split panel that I can kind of mix and match and use on anything. Saddle accessories wise, I really like the stowaway stuff. So I've got um, this water bottle holder, so it clips onto the front D-ring and then this goes under your saddle flap attached to the, the girth leather straps that I can't remember the name of still. Um, I've got a black one and a navy one, so for my different saddles. I've also got like a little um, pannier saddle pack version, it's probably about this big that I put my spare hoof boot in if I know I'm not going to be able to see my crew out on course for a long time in case I lose a shoe and that just goes on the back of my saddle ties down super nicely keeps me hydrated and you all know how I love hydration <laughs> so next up kind of what I wear for training we'll go and have a little look at my competition stuff that I keep in the lorry in a little bit um, so I've got two sets of Roycal, Roycal sorry again if I've butchered that gloves I've got my winter set they're kind of the waterproof version um, and then my summer set they're a little bit more lightweight though actually these ones or maybe a little bit hot for summer so they're, they're really good for when it's not wet but it's kind of normal temperatures but when it's super hot and sunny I might need to get ones that are a little bit more vented um, but I just I love the brand they last really long they fit me really well top notch then for helmet I have an LAS XTB I think it is um, in the shiny navy blue I really need to buy a new helmet I've fallen off on this a couple of times and I know that once you fall you should buy a new one um, so I am on the lookout for a really lightweight helmet because this is super lightweight with the MIPS so the kind of the brain injury protection system I found the back on track Lynx one however I'm a 53.5 head and their small goes up to 53 and their medium starts at 54 the 54 even tightest was too big and the small was too small so I had to send it back but that anything like that would be perfect so if you have any recommendations for a super lightweight navy helmet with the MIP system that I can train in because um, I've had a few concussions and I really want to look after my brain um, then please let me know pop it in the comments if I find one as well, I will let you know what I what I choose. But at the moment, I love the LS, LAS helmets. I've been riding in these for a long, long time. I've had this version and the Anvil, um, and I really, really like them both. Really rate them super comfy. Boots-wise, can you tell that I haven't actually cleaned anything for this? So you're seeing it in the flesh, how it is day to day. Um, Boots-wise, I just, I love the Ariette short boots. These are absolutely battered from falling off, being dragged along the road, wearing them every day. These are the Heritage 5 waterproof ones. I prefer just for ease of use the zip up ones for day to day riding. But my competition ones you'll see in a bit are um, lace up because they have a little bit more control I think, a little bit more ankle stability. I have had these for years and they're doing really well and it's only this year that they've lost their waterproofness. So I'm going to get some new ones soon. Um, so that I can use those in winter, but I'll still use these in the summer um, when it's not absolutely pouring down because they've still got plenty of life in them yet. Now a lot of endurance riders, because in cage stirrups you don't need the heel, they'll ride in trainers, and I did for a while, but I actually prefer having that ankle support. Um, and again, a lot of endurance riders don't wear chaps, they just wear socks, but I just can't do that because the inside of my calves get super rubbed. Um, so I have got these custom made chaps from Intercure, I think they're a French brand, um, there's the labelling, obviously in navy and white. I've had these since 2011 now, um, so they're doing really really well but Joe, this is where I landed on the road I think and 
the stitching is only just starting to fray a bit and the leather get a little bit thin so I'm hoping to get some new custom ones made maybe for next season maybe I'll get them for Christmas done <laughs> um, I really rate them they're just leather there's loads of different endurance options and I've, I've tried a few but these are definitely the comfiest and I don't get hot underneath them either that's usually the question I get asked do you get hot with leather chaps no super comfy never get rubs and I really like the detailing of the arch on the top I think it looks super smart Lastly in the tack room are my boots. So for training out and about, just for ease of cleaning, I use the Woofwear Club brushing boots. I would really like to try the Equilibrium Tri-Zone All Sport boots because there's been some research recently by Dr. David Marlin on like loads of different types of boots and the Equilibrium Tri-Zone ones are meant to be the best in terms of they don't heat up the tendons too much, they've got really good impact protection, nice and durable, um, and these actually do get a little bit hot, but they are really easy to clean. Um, so when I've got a few extra pennies, I think I'm going to try the Equilibrium boots, because heating up the tendons can cause cell damage, so when, when you're wearing boots for such a long time like I don't want to not wear them because I don't want to get stupid little knock injuries or you know if they freak out and stand on themselves or anything like that in training I don't want having not worn boots to mean that I can't compete but also you know I don't want the detrimental parts of boots so getting the best ones are crucial um, but for competition I have always used the new equine wear boots and just because um tizzy is quite sensitive skin she wears back brushing boots and only recently she had to wear front boots um as she's got older she does clip the front a little bit but she's always brushed a little bit behind um we found that we needed something fluffy because when we're out on course if like sand got down there and there wasn't this fluff it would rub her whereas these never ever rub they always stay up they're really really good um, these are the front cross country boots that I use on Qantas but I will get some of the smaller brushing boots I think for him um, if the tri-zone ones turn out not to be suitable um, but I've got quite the collection of these because we need a new set of boots for every loop before I show you kind of some of my competition bits and the other stuff that I use that are in my lorry I thought I'd go through my favorite riding stuff so my two favourite brands are probably Noble, Equestrian and Carrots. I was kindly given a Carrots outfit by Glaze and Gordon, so you can get um, this ice cool long sleeve navy top from them, they're the UK stockist, um, and this little gilet. Um, the Noble Equestrian tights, Noble Outfitters, I love that they've got the pocket. Too much information, but I love that they've got like a little gullet so they, you don't get the, the camel. Um, and they're just really nice fitting, quite high waisted and they're the, some of the very few riding tights that have the belt loops and I've got an Edwin Bell custom competition boot, um, belt um, that I like to thread through in navy and white. Might have seen on one of the previous vlogs that Qantas actually kicked my vlog and scraped the leather. Little monkey. Did save me from quite a nasty bruise though. Um, so I really love these, these riding tights. My favourite socks are the Gaston Mercier ones, they're a French brand, they're so so good, or I compete in the Noble Equestrian ones, um, and I kind of just mix and match, I've just got these in lots of different colours, I'm not sure who stocks them in the UK because I tend to have an eBay search out for second hand ones, and if a different colour one in my size comes up then, then I usually grab it. <laughs> okay so for heart rates I use a Lippmann Cardiac Stethoscope, they're just the best, Lippmann are really 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 good um, and they make listening so much easier and the cardiac ones are, are particularly good. My top tip is they twist so you can use the smaller side or the flat side. If you can't hear anything make sure it's twisted the right way because that's a common mistake people make. Then I've got two types of electronic heart rate monitor, both from Polar. So I've got the Polar handheld one that you just pop on the side and it's got a little watch to show you um, the heart rate. I've got the Polar kind of strap one so they both have watches as well. 
they've got the electrodes on the underside and it just means no one has to hold it and the heart rate is being taken continually as these are attached to the horse. Welcome to the back of my lorry. Um, not a particularly exciting place, but I keep my specifically for competition stuff here. So my tack and my numbness and stuff are the same for training or competition. I like to keep it the same. The only difference is for me, I have my lace up Ariat boots for competition. These must be, I think I got these in 2010. So these are doing well. Um, and also I've got my competition Intercure custom chaps. Again, I've had these since 2012, so they're doing quite well. Um, and I would really like some new ones soon. These can be demoted to training only. So last but not least, um, my competition coat is actually an Adidas running coat. I find like cycling or running jackets so much lighter weight and they're really super waterproof and they're really nice to wear so i usually have those for competition rather than an equestrian specific and then my competition riding hat is again a custom gpa um and it's got like a sparkly kind of front bit with this white leather piping the white vents and the navy vents and GBR on the back and I absolutely adore this helmet I don't use it for training because I fall off a lot because my my horses are very enthusiastic and sometimes take me by surprise so I only use it for competition to keep it nice and safe um, and then my competition gloves again Reichel because I really really love them I use the Madrid ones I have three because I did have a spare set but at Golden Horseshoe 2018, my crew lost one. So one of these has much less wear than the others. So I've got I've got two right ones. So if I ever lose a glove, I hope it's the right side and not the left side. <laughs> So I hope you enjoyed a little bit of an insight into all the gear I use for endurance training and competition and obviously if you have any questions about any of the kit then comment down below and I will try and answer them as best I can. The great thing about endurance is there's so much variety as well in what people wear, the kit you can use and you can really use whatever you've got especially kind of the lower levels while you're learning the ropes and seeing what you need you don't really need to buy anything new as long as you've got well-fitting tech and comfortable clothing and everything that your horse needs to be um, looked after then you don't need to buy anything specific um, which I really really love but obviously I've been doing endurance a very long time so I've got a kind of accumulated lots of kit and almost everything in this I've bought so apart from the girth sleeve and the top from Glaze and Gordon who are really really nice to kind of support our YouTube channel and give me the chance to try out a few bits from their website. Thank <laughs> you.